Hello YouTube and welcome back to another Dare to Game video. Today we're playing Mountain Blade Bannerlord and we're doing the Realm of Thrones mod here, so the Game of Thrones Total Conversion mod. And the topic of today's video is called the Armor of the Seven Kingdom. And so I'm going to be showing you seven different suits of armor that are pretty iconic and recognizable from both the TV show and obviously, I mean, illustrations from the books, but mostly the TV show because that's where the art style comes from. So we're just going to start it off at number seven, which is the Riverlands. And so you can see this is what the suit of armor I came up with with the Riverlands looks like. Uh, like I said, it takes the number seven spot. The pieces that make it up, uh, we're just going to be focusing on armor for everything, including the stats. So the pieces that make it up are the Riverlands Coif, uh, the Riverlands Shoulders, the Riverlands Noble Armor, the Leather Van Braces, which obviously, again, are not a named item set with the suit of armor, but I think match it pretty well. Uh, and considering there was nothing else to use as an option, you know, the Riverlands Van Braces or something, this is what I thought went best with it. And then the Riverlands Boots. So most of it is all unique stuff to the mod, and I think looks excellent, goes really, really well with the aesthetic from the Riverlands for, uh, that was established in the show, and I think the suit of armor looks pretty solid. Uh, as far as the stats are concerned on this, uh, we have a total AAR or average armor rating of 37.5, and the suit of armor itself is, has a weight of 10.6 kilograms. So a pretty light suit of armor overall, not bad if you want to run a little bit lighter, and so your load weight is not bad there. So yeah, uh, pretty solid. Uh, obviously AAR isn't crazy high, but c given that it's a pretty light suit of male and leather it shouldn't be too hard to believe that it's you know a bit lower so yeah like i said that's the riverlands and it takes up the number seven spot let's move on to number six all right, at number six, we have the Iron Islands, uh, which you can see displayed right here. So obviously this will be the armor of people from the Iron Islands. That should be pretty self-explanatory, I would think. Uh, in the show, the main house that we associate with them is the Greyjoys. And so this suit of armor is made up of the following pieces, the Ironborn Helmet, the Ironborn Pauldrons, the Greyjoy Armor, the Ironborn Gauntlets, and the Ironborn Boots. So I think this one looks pretty dang solid. They did a great job of matching the aesthetic from the show, and just in general, general it fits really well and doesn't look bad so there's some armor in this mod that just doesn't fit well I don't know if they were just matching it off a bad model from the show or whatever but uh, this one does look pretty good and I definitely enjoy the way it looks it's also a step up from the last one stat wise we have an AAR or average armor rating of 39.5 so a little bit better and a weight of 12.7 kilograms so a little bit heavier but nothing crazy so still pretty light uh, considering I think this looks great there's several different suits of ironborn themed armor in this mod but this combination is my favorite out of all of them. So yeah, that is the uh, number six spot. It's the basically uh, light Greyjoy armor, and it, it represents the Iron Islands for this video. So yeah, that's number six. Let's move on to number five. At number five, we've got the Armor of the North. And so there's a bunch of different varieties because this mod seems to maybe have focused on, on that first, but there's a lot of different Northern armor in the game. This combination is my favorite out of all of them, just because I think it looks the best and obviously, you know, provides pretty solid stats. So this suit of armor is made up of the following pieces, the Northern Heavy Helmet, the Northern Pauldrons, the Northern Armor 2, which the Northern Armor 1 and 2 are exactly the same in every way, except for one, the first variant is darker. It's like a blackish color, and this one's the lighter brown. Uh, then we have the Northern Gloves and the Stark Boots 2. So I think this is a really, really great looking suit of armor. Not only does it look great from like a realism and such perspective, like I really like the aesthetic of it, but it also just looks good in general. It's an appealing style. Uh, there's various choices I had to make, like they have heavier plate boots and gloves, but I didn't think they fit the aesthetic as well. And there's like, instead of the northern heavy helmets, you can use the Stark helmets. The problem with the Stark helmets, because they hit the shape from the show better, but they're too big. They're oversized. They make your head look ridiculously funny. So uh, that's why I went with this one. So all in all, a pretty solid looking suit of armor, in my opinion. I definitely like it. As for stats on this one, we're a step above the last one. Our AAR or average armor rating is 41. So pretty solid there. And our weight on this one is still pretty light, actually being lighter than the Iron Islands, coming in at only 11.9 kilograms. So the armor of the North, like I said, it looks really, really good. They did a great job on this and it's got pretty dang solid stats. So like I said, that's the armor representing the North for this video. All right, next up at the number four spot, we have the Dornish armor. So this is, uh, they also have put a decent amount of work into 
Dornish armor in this game, so there's a couple different varieties, especially of the chest piece. I decided to go with the House Martell just because they're the, the predominant house, and also it looks really cool. But there are several different options, including one that doesn't have a sigil on it, it's just plain metal. But like I said, uh, pretty solid looking in general. I really like the way it looks. This suit is made up of the Dornish Plate Helmet, the Dornish Pauldrons 2, the House Martell Plate Armor, the Gauntlets, and the Gascari Boots. So you can see the top three are specifically Dornish. The Gauntlets are just a generalized gauntlet from the game because they don't have a Dornish gauntlet that uh, goes well with the suit of armor. In fact, there might not be one at all. And then the boots are the same sort of thing. They don't have a Dornish boot, so I just went for one that aesthetically looks good with it, and that's how I landed on the Gascari boots. So... I would say note about this suit of armor to the mod authors, maybe make some gloves and boots for the Dornish armor as well. But with that being said, uh, this suit of armor has pretty solid stats, being a slight step above the Northern armor, with an AAR or average armor rating of 41.25 and a weight of 14.9 kilograms, so it is a little bit heavier. That being said, like I said, I love the aesthetic of it. It uh, goes really well for that Southern desert style, at least in my opinion. It breaks the, I guess, stereotype of a lightly armored sort of nomadic armor, because this is a nice heavy plate armor but I think aesthetic wise it looks really good for Dorn. I like the way it looks. I think the mod authors did a great job here. So excellent work on the style of it and obviously stat wise it's quite good. I don't love the clipping there but that's mostly just because these gauntlets weren't designed to go with this specific piece of armor. Uh, if they designed some gloves for the mod that uh, go better with the Dornish armor, I would obviously replace these with them. But with all that being said that's the number four spot and it goes to Dorn. Let's move on to number three. At number three, we have the Veil. Vale. So the Veil vale of Aaron, the little secluded place uh, that in the main story stayed out of the main conflict like a bunch of chickens. But anyway, uh, this suit of armor is made up of the following pieces. The Veil vale Knight helmet, the Veil vale pauldrons, the Veil vale Knight armor, the gauntlets, and the male trusses. So you can see the top three are specifically designed for the mod. These are specifically modeled to look like veil stuff. And then the bottom ones were again using the general gauntlets just because they don't have an, uh, a hand armor for the suit of armor. And we have the male trusses for the boots just because again they don't have specifically designed boots. And I thought those fit it the best. Uh, as far as aesthetics on this suit of armor go, I don't hate it, but it looks weirdly bulky. Like compared to most of the armor in this mod that seems to be pretty well fitting, the veil armor, especially the I mean, but I would say all of it, really. It all looks a little bit weirdly oversized. That being said, I guess they did a good job of matching it to the aesthetic in the show. I just have always felt that what they went with in the show also looked pretty bad. I would have gone for a more stereotypical Andal, like, high medieval knight armor when I was de designing the armor of the Knights of the Vale for the show. I would have made them look cooler than the other faction's knights, not weirdly bland and disfigured. Uh, as far as stats for the suit of armor go, we've got a slight step above Dorne for our AAR, or average armor rating, that being 40. 41.75, so just a little bit better than Dorn, and our weight here is 17.3, so the heaviest one so far, and, you know, getting into the range of pretty dang heavy. If you like this aesthetic, then, you know, more power to you. I don't much care for it, but like I said, that does pretty well represent the veil. So that is the number three spot on this list, the third best. Let's move on to number two. At number two, we of course have the Westerlands, the uh, area belonging to the Lannisters from the show and book. So obviously should be pretty iconic. It showed up in the show enough times that everyone should recognize this style of armor. Uh, this suit of armor is made up of the following items, the Lannister helmet, the Lannister heavy pauldrons, the Lannister armor, the Lannister bracers with gloves, and the Lannister boots. So very Lannister themed here. Uh, there are a lot of Westerlands themed armor pieces in this, uh, in this mod, so it's clear that the North and the Westerlands probably got the most attention, or at least the earliest attention, because out of all of the factions, they have the largest variety by far. I think, uh, as far as the options go, that this is the best one for hitting that iconic look from the show, and also just looking really good, because there's a lot of different options, uh, armor piece-wise, with slight changes, and I think this combination just is the best out of them. As far as stats on this one go, we have an AAR of 42 right on the nose, so just a slight step up from the Veil, and a weight of 17.3, so the same weight as the Veil. So the Westerlands armor gives slightly better protection, although it's very close to the Veil, uh, but has the same weight. With that in mind, I also think that it looks better. Even though I've never liked the style of helmet they went for in the TV show, I think that the overall aesthetic of the Lannister armor does look very good. Obviously, it gives off the vibe of being very fancy and rich, what with the gold 
and the red accents being, you know, probably a more expensive than necessary armor style, but it does look really good. So the Westerlin's armor takes the number two spot on this list for armor value, but it also looks really, really good. So I'd forgive you for saying it's the best. Uh, but yeah, that's number two. Let's move on to the number one spot for the armor of the Seven Kingdoms. All right, finally at number one, we have the Reach, the Breadbasket of Westeros. And for this one, they had several different options to go down to for suits of armor, but most of them were incomplete and looked kind of silly because they'd have like the shoulder armor built into the torso and so there was no piece of shoulder armor so stat wise they were at a major disadvantage or they looked weird so I decided to go with the only one that was complete and uh, unique enough to warrant a spot on this list and it is made up of the following pieces the reach heavy helmet the reach heavy shoulders the reach heavy armor the reach gauntlets and the reach plate boots I would say comparing it to something from the show slash books it kind of looks like Loras Terrell's armor in the way that it's very fancy and very floral themed I guess and maybe it's a really good example of what it would have looked like from the books uh, but other than that I don't recognize it from the show I'm just assuming they're going off a book description for one of the Tyrell sons uh, with all that in mind I think it looks pretty good it's obviously very comprehensive plate armor so aesthetics wise I don't have a lot to complain about there and it feels right for such a rich and prosperous region uh, with a lot of time to dedicate to the chivalric arts so I think this one aesthetically makes a lot of sense and also looks very good just from an armor perspective. That being said, stat-wise for this one, we've got the highest AAR or average armor rating, that being 43, a whole point better than the Westerlands, and a weight of 18.3, so it's also the heaviest armor on this list, but considering it's got the best protection, I don't think that's too unreasonable. So with all that in mind, that is all seven suits of the armor of the Seven Kingdoms. There's obviously a ton of armor in this game, and I'm likely to make more videos, but I figured this is where I'd start it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and had a great time watching it, or you learned a lot from it, or whatever the case may be. I hope you had all that, but with all that in mind, thanks a ton for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. But that's all for today, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching another Dare to Game video. If you liked this video, please leave a like and a comment. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel. If you like my content and would like to support this channel, consider becoming a member today for as little as $1.99 a month. It makes a huge difference. But in any case, thanks for watching, and have a nice day. I'll see you next time.